Good day, learners. You have received resource pack for terms two, three, and four. I have combined all the terms according to the syllabus for 2021. So in this term, I'll take you through to, from lessons one to lesson seven from your resource pack. So let us begin. Okay. So we are on lesson one, and this is on price theory. This is the demand and supply. Okay. For this section, you can do some reading on pages 94 to 99 of your textbook. Okay. So let us start understanding the concepts of demand. What does demand mean? It is the quantity of goods or services that the consumers are willing to and are able to purchase at different prices. Okay, then the law of demand states that the higher the price of the products, the lower the quantity demanded. And the lower the price of the products, the higher the quantity demanded. Okay, let's use an example for the law of demand. If we have If we have chocolates selling at the price of five rand, and then we have chocolates, the same chocolate selling at the price of two rand. Now there's going to be a higher demand for the chocolates at the price of two rand, but lower demand for the chocolates at the price of five rand. That is why we say there is an inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demanded. Then the demand schedule is a table that shows the quantity of goods and services that are demanded at the different prices. When we present an example to you, you'll have a better understanding of it. Okay, let us just discuss very quickly the factors that determine the demand for a product. Okay, firstly, is the price of the product. If the price is too high, some customers may not want to purchase the product. If the price is low, of course, they will want to purchase. Let's look at advertising. Advertising means how effective the message of the product is passed on onto the consumer. Okay, then the price of other products means if the substitute products or the price of the substitute products are cheaper, some customers might prefer purchasing those substitute products over the products that are on sale. Okay, in weather conditions as well. We look at different types of weathers. If it's a cold day, of course, there's going to be a demand for coffee and hot chocolate. But on a hot day, the demand for coffee and hot chocolate is not going to be as much as it was on a cold day. And of course, we have fashion. Fashion also impacts the demand for a product. People have different kinds of tastes in fashion. When a certain garment is in fashion, the demand might be higher than when it is not. Okay, just let's look at this example that I presented to you here. This is a demand schedule that has the information about cell phones. Okay, these are the prices of cell phones and this is a quantity demanded. Okay, so let's see how we are going to present this on a graph. Okay, here we have the price axis and here we have the quantity axis. The price axis is vertical, quantity axis is horizontal. So let's start plotting our points. For the price of 10 Rand, quantity demanded is 1000. So for the price of 10 Rand, we go straight across and the quantity demanded is 1,000. So we plot a point here. Then the next one, for the price of 20 rand, the quantity demanded is 800. Can you see? We plot a point here as well. Then we continue. For the price of 30 rand, the quantity demanded is 600 cell phones. For the price of 40, the quantity demanded is 400. 
for the price of 50, quantity demanded is 200, and for the price of 60 rand, perhaps customers don't want to demand anything, any cell phones. That is why quantity demanded is zero. So now we have the demand curve. Can you see the demand curve? We join all those dots to present a demand curve to you called DD. Okay? So I hope you are able to understand the demand curve. Let's go further down. Right. Now we are looking at supply. What does supply mean? It is the quantity of goods or service that suppliers are willing and are able to produce at different prices. Let's look at the law of supply. The higher the price of goods or products, the higher the quantity supplied. Why is this so? Because the supplier feels or believes that they can make a higher profit if they supply more at a higher price, okay? And then the lower the price of the products, the lower the quantity supplied. Here the supplier feels it is not worth their time to produce products because the price is too low. That is why you'll find a few customers, a few, sorry, few suppliers willing to produce a very small quantity, okay? Therefore, we say there is a direct relationship between price and quantity supplied. Basically, direct relationship means the higher the price of the products, the higher the quantity supplied. If it's lower the price, the lower the quantity supplied. Okay, now all these kind of figures are presented in a table which we call a demand, uh, sorry, a supply schedule. Okay, it is a table showing the quantity of goods and services that are supplied at different prices. Okay, this is the market schedule. We call it a supply schedule. Okay, let's look at the factors that determine the supply of a product. Firstly, the price of the product. If the prices are very, very low, of course, the suppliers will feel it's not worth their time and they will want to supply very, very less. Okay, if the price is high, the supply is obviously going to increase. What about the cost of production? If it is very, very expensive to produce the product, the supplier will add the cost of that production onto the final product price. Okay, then the method of production. If it is a very complex method that was used to produce those goods, of course, the customer will pay a high price for it, for those products. And then we have the number of producers, okay? That also determines the supply of product. If there are very many producers producing the same product, of course, the, uh, the supply will be more. If there's very, very few suppliers producing, the supply might be limited. Okay, let's use this example to understand supply further. So we use the information on the supply schedule to complete the supply curve. The market conditions for supply of cell phones. Here we have prices. Can you see it's going up? Price is increasing. What's happening to quantity supply? It is also increasing. Can, now, can you now see the direct relationship? Both are increasing in the same direction. Okay, so let's plot these points onto our demand and demand, uh, uh, sorry, the supply curve. Okay, in the set of axes. This is our price axis and this is my quantity axis. So for the price of 10 rand, suppliers feel that it's not worth it for them to produce cell phones, so they will produce zero. Basically, there's no supply. So for the price of 20 rand, can see 200 supplies, uh, cell phones being produced and supplied. For the price of 30 ren, there's 400. For the price of 40 ren, there's 600. For the price of 50 ren, there's 800 cell phones. And for the price of 60 ren, it is 1,000 units of cell phone. Okay, so when we plot those points there, we join them together to present the supply curve, and we will label it S and S. You see that, learners? 
Okay, so what have we deduced after drawing the supply curve and the demand curve? Let's go further down. We got the deductions, the, what we have deduced, or the characteristics of the demand and supply curve. Let's look at demand. We got that this curve slope downward from left to right, and therefore we say it has a negative slope. Basically, the relationship is like this. Price, quantity demanded. When the price goes up, quantity demanded goes down. When the price goes down, quantity demanded goes up. Can you see that? There's an increase. However, there's a difference. Therefore, we say here in the demand curve, there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Can you see the arrow going up and down here? Okay, let's look at supply now. The curve slopes upward from left to right. Can you see left? Can you see right? So it's sloping upward, okay? Therefore, we say it has a positive slope. It's going high, it's going up. Let's look at the relationship between price and quantity supply. When the price increases, this results in the quantity supply increases. And when the price decreases, this results in quantity supply decreases. Okay, learners, I hope you were able to understand that. All right, so now let's look at plotting the same schedule of demand and supply on the same set of axes, right? The demand and supply on the same set of axes. Okay, there's a condition that we arrive at and that is called market equilibrium. Now market equilibrium, is a market condition when the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied at a given price. When I look at this graph here, where does quantity supply and quantity demand meet? They meet at this point E. Can you see that? That is why we call it equilibrium. At a given quantity and at a given price. Can you see that, learners? Okay. So, that's my equilibrium condition. That's my market equilibrium, okay? Then we have the market equilibrium price. That is the price at which quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. This is the price. Can you see it's 35 Rand? Okay, that's my equilibrium price. This is my equilibrium point. That's E. Equilibrium price is 35 Rand. Further to that, let's look at equilibrium quantity. This is the quantity when equilibrium point is reached. Can you see my equilibrium point there? So my quantity goes further down. Can you see it meets at 500? That's my quantity, 500. Okay, let's use this example now and the schedules to present this curve and understand it. Right, use the information on the demand and supply curve to complete the demand and supply. Right, the market conditions for the demand and supply of cell phones. Basically, this is a schedule that is presenting information about the price, the quantity demanded, and quantity supplied. So I am going to use my prices here, okay, on my axis, and then I'm going to quantity demanded. So for 10 rand, 10 rand. Quantity demanded is 1,000. I put a point there, plot a point. For 20, it is 800. For 30, it is 600. For 40, it is 400. For 50, it's 200. And for 60, it's zero cell phone. So I'm going to join those dots and present D, D, which means that's my demand curve. Now, I am going to block out quantity demanded and look at price and quantity supplied. So for the price of 10 rand, zero units are supplied. For the price of 20 rand, we have 200 units supplied. For the price of 30 rand, we have 400 units. For the price of 40 rand, we have 600 units. For 50 rand, we have 200 units sorry, 800 units. 
And for the price of 60 rand, we have a thousand units. Can you see that? So I'm going to join those dots together and present to you an SS. That means that's my supply curve. So at the point when the demand and the supply intersect, or when it meets up or cuts each another, we say that is my equilibrium point. Can you see the keys here? E is for equilibrium, okay? So what is my equilibrium price? I go from here straight until I meet, meet the price axis and I arrive at the price of 35 rand. And then I just drop down straight and I arrive at a quantity of 500 units. Can you see now, learners? That's my demand and my supply curve, all presented on the same set of axes. Okay, therefore we say equilibrium price is 35 rand and equilibrium quantity is 500 units. Okay, learners, I want you to complete this activity now on the demand and supply curve in your notebook. Okay, the information that's presented for the, the answers to this activity is all in your resource pack. Okay, let's look at question one. State the law of demand, it's in your resource pack. State the law of supply. I want you to learn these, learn of all the questions and answers here because these, can, these type of questions are used for exam purposes. Okay, we describe the equilibrium, market equilibrium is when quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. What is the equilibrium price? It is the price at which, mark, uh, at which quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. What is the equi uh, equilibrium quantity demanded and supplied? Right, it is the equilibrium quantity when quantity demanded and quantity supplied are equal. Okay, let's look at this example here. They say at the price of 20 then, is there an excess or is there an increase in demand or supply? Let's say you did not have this graph here, Lance. Let's say you did not have this graph and we only had the schedule. They say at the price of 20 rand, is there an increase in demand or supply? When I look at 20 rand, can you see 20 rand? Quantity demanded is 800, quantity supply is 200. So what is more? Where is there an increase in quantity? demanded. Can you see that? Let's look at our curve now. At the price of 20 done, quantity supplied is only 200. Can you see? But quantity sub, uh, demanded is how much? 800. Can you see that? At the same price. So they ask you, number six, at the price of 20 done, is there an increase in quantity supply or quantity demanded? There is an increase in quantity demanded. Can you see that? The demand curve is further away. Can you see that? By how much? Can you see the amount of 800? And here we have the amount of 200, which means 800 minus 200. So the increase is 800 minus 200, which will equal to 600 units. Can you see here? Okay, that means there's excess demand, all right? Then we have question seven. What do we call the condition in question six, the condition means there's excess demand. Can you see? The suppliers are only willing to supply 200 at the price of 20, but the demand is in excess of 800, in excess of 600. The demand there is 800. So 800 minus 200 gives you 600 units, okay? So we call that condition excess demand. At the price of 50 rand, is there an oversupply or undersupply? And by what quantity? Let's look at question eight. Let's look at the price of 50 rand. We have quantity demanded is 200. We have quantity supplied is 800. So what is more? There's an oversupply. Can you see? Oversupply of what? Or what quantity? It's 800 minus 200. Oversupply of 600 cell phones. Let's look at our graph now. At the price of 20 rand, sorry, 50 rand, the customers are only willing to demand 200 units. Can you see? 
But because the price is 50 rand, suppliers are willing to supply 800 units. So that places us in a different kind of a market condition that is called excess supply. Can you see the supply curve is further away? So we say that's excess supply or oversupply. Can you see that, learners? Okay, the last one. What is the sales value of cell phones supplied at 40 Rand? Let's look at 40 Rand. When will sales take place? Sales take place when there's a demand for the product and when purchases are made. Now the question asks you, what is the sales value of suppliers supplied, uh, of cell phones supplied at 40 Rand? So at 40 Rand, the quantity supplied is 600. Can you see that? So basically, you take the variable of the price, that's 40 Rand, multiplied by variable of quantity supplied, that's 600. So 40 times 600 will give you your answer of the sales value. You will work that out and complete it in your notebook. In class, we will continue marking it. Okay, learners, thank you so much. Happy studying.